In this video, we will see how to create a pivot table for multiple worksheets. So here we have some supermarket sales data. So we have the data for the year 2021 in one sheet and the data for the year 2022 in the second sheet and the data for the year 2023 in the third sheet. And what we're aiming for is to consolidate all this data into a single table and then create a pivot table based on that. Of course, we can do that manually by copying and pasting and basically appending the data or putting it above each other, but that would be a time consuming process and we would be prone to making errors. So what we're going to do is that we're going to do that using Power Query. Also, if you take a look at the data, you'll find that there is a product ID column, and this is the only column related to the products that are sold. But this column does not explain what kind of product has been sold. So what's the product name and its category and its brand. So in order to know that, we're going to connect our data to another table here in a separate workbook that contains the product IDs, product names, categories, and brands. And we're going to do that through table relationships. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so start with loading or importing the sales data for the different years to Power Query. And to do that, we'll start with creating an Excel table out of our data. So select any cell in our data and then press Control and T on a keyboard and click OK. And this will create an Excel table. And you can see here it has this blue styling. So to remove the styling, we'll just select any cell in the table, go to table design. And then here, we'll just click on clear and this will remove any styling from the table and we'll give our table a name which is sales 2021 and we'll do the same for the 2022 sales table here so create a table remove the styling and we'll rename the second table to sales 2022 by the way, keeping the table styling won't make any difference when it comes to importing the data to Power Query, but I just like to remove the styling and we'll do the same for 2023. So create a table out of that and then clear the styling and let's just name our table sales 2023. And now we'll start importing the data on our different worksheets to Power Query. So start with the 2021 data, select any cell in the table, go to data and then click on from table or range. And this will import the 2021 sales data to Power Query. And you can see here that when you create a query out of an Excel table, the query inherits the table name. So what we're going to do here is that we're gonna change some data types. So on the date column, we'll make that a date and we'll replace the current data type changes that Excel has done by default. And this will be replaced also on any future refreshing or loading of the data. For the time also, we're gonna change that here to a time data type. And this is basically the time of the transaction. And we'll also change the unit price and the sales amount. So I'll select them by selecting one column here and holding control and selecting the other. And then I'll select a currency data type for that because that's money. And we'll click on the arrow under close and load and we'll click on close and load two because we want to load that only to the connection, to the Power Query connection. So we'll only create a connection and only creating a connection means that the data would be loaded, but with no output to the workbook, like putting the data in a worksheet, for example. Click OK, and we'll do the same for the 2022 data. So we'll select any cell, go to data from table or range, and here we'll make this a date, and we'll make the time column here a time data type, and for the unit price and sales amount, we'll make that a currency and we'll close and load two, and we'll only create a connection. And let's do the same for the 2023 data here. So data from table slash range, and we'll make that a date, and we'll make that a time, and we'll make the unit price and the sales amount currency data type, and then go to close and load, close and load two, and we'll only create a connection here. All right. So after importing the data for the different years, we need to consolidate the data into a single table. So we'll go back to Power Query and we can do that by going to the data tab on the ribbon, click on get data and then launch Power Query editor or under queries and connections here, we'll see the three different queries that were created. We can just double click on any query and this will also 
take us to the Power Query editor. So now we're going to use a transformation called the append queries transformation. So select any of our queries here and we'll go to the home tab and then under append queries. If we click on the arrow here, we'll have two options, append queries and append queries is new. And the difference is that if we use append queries, then it will append all the queries in the same query that we started the appending on. So on the sales 2023 query, we'll have all the data and not only the data for sales 2023. While append queries is new, we'll append the data or consolidate the data, but into a brand new query. And this is actually what we're going to do. So click on append queries is new. And here it's going to ask us if we want to append from only two tables or three tables or more. In this case, actually, we have three tables or three queries. And this is what we're going to do here. And because we started the appending on the sales 2023 query, we already have that added. So we'll just add the sales 2021 and the sales 2022. And we can also rearrange the queries or the data in the consolidated table, although this won't affect our results or won't affect the results of our pivot table, but it's just to have, for example, the data for 2021 first. So just push it up and the sales for 2022 afterwards, and then the sales for 2023, but this will not affect the results of our pivot table in any way or form. So we'll click okay here. And now we have a fourth query created with the consolidated data, as you can see here, it's named append one by default, but we can just double click to rename that and it'll just rename it sales here. You can also rename it here under the query settings pane here. You can just change the name from here as well. All right, so we have our appended query ready. So we'll just click here on the arrow under close and load and we'll close and load two. And for this query, we will only create a connection but we're also going to add it to the data model. And this is because later on, we're going to connect it to the products table via table relationships. This is why it needs to be added to the data model. So we'll do that and we'll click OK. All right, so as you can see here on the queries and connections pane, we have a fourth query called sales, which contains our consolidated data. And also under the data tab, if you go to manage data model, you'll see here that our sales data has gone to the data model. And if you go to the diagram view, you will also see our sales table. So now we can actually start creating a pivot table from from the data in the data model, which is the sales data, the consolidated sales data. So we can go to insert and then pivot table and we'll select from data model and we'll choose to create it in a new worksheet and click OK. And as you can see here, we've created a new pivot table. And this pivot table is based on data in the data model. And the data in the data model or the tables that are in the data model are the ones having this orange color here. So under all here, you see that we have the consolidated sales table. We could put, for example, the product ID here on the rows section and then put the sales amount. And you can see here that we're able to get the sales amounts for the different products that we have. However, these product IDs are not very descriptive. So they don't tell us what product has been sold, what its brand is, what category it's under. So this kind of information we can't know from just the product ID. So in order to know the names of the products, their brands and their categories, we're going to import also the product table and put it into the data model and then connect it to the sales table so that we're able to use fields from the products table in our pivot table in order to be able to dissect our sales data by product name, brand and category. And let's also rename that sheet here to pivot table. All right, so now we'll import our products table and throw it into the data model in order to connect it to our consolidated sales table. So to do that, we'll go to the data tab on the ribbon and here under get data, we'll go to from file and then from Excel workbook. And here we'll navigate to the workbook containing our products table and there it is. So just double click on it in order to import our products table and it's in a sheet called sheet one. So we'll select it and then click on transform data in order to 
check the data further in the Power Query editor and see if there are any transformations to be made on it. And as you can see here, Power Query has detected the data types correctly for all the columns. But what we can do is to change the query name here and we'll name it products. And then we'll go to close and load and close and load two. We'll select only create a connection and we'll also add this data to the data model because later on we're going to connect it to the sales table. So click OK here. So now if we go to the data tab here and click on manage data model, we'll notice that we have the products table here imported to our data model. If we go to the diagram view, we'll also find that we have two tables here, which are the sales table and the products table. Now, in order to create a relationship between the two tables, we can drag and drop from the product ID, which is the common column on the two tables here. So we can drag here from the fact table to the dimension table or from the table containing our transactions to the table containing our product descriptions here. So if we do that, this will create a relationship between the two tables, which is a one to many relationship here from the products to the sales table. And if you want to delete that connection or remove it, you can just click it and click on delete on your keyboard here and you can delete it. And another way to do it as well is under the data tab here, you click on relationships and click on new. And here first you need to select your fact table here, which is your transactions table and select the common column between the two tables, which is the product ID in this case, and then select here the dimension table. And you'll see here that it will automatically identify that the product ID is the common column, click OK, and this will also create a relationship. So these are two ways to create relationships between tables. Now, if we close our queries and connections pane here and view our pivot table fields pane, you'll see here that we have the sales table and the products table here in the data model. You'll see that tables that are in the data model are the ones having this orange thing here, but the other tables here are not in the data model. These three tables for 2021, 2022, and 2023 are not in the data model and they don't have this orange thing on them. So if we go to the products table here and drag the product name here and put it on the rows section of the pivot table and remove the product ID, you'll see here that we're able to dissect our sales by the product names. We can also put the category here as well and dissect our data by the product categories. Now, let me tell you a few points to consider when appending data in Power Query. And the first point is that you need to make sure that the spelling for the column headers is the same across all the appended tables. So for example, in sales 2021, if we make that column named date, we make its name dates. And then in the other two tables, it is date. Then if we do an appending, if we append queries as new and we'll append from three or more tables, We'll put 2022 and 2023 sales data here and click OK. You can see here that now we have a dates column and we also have a date column which will contain the data for 2022 and 2023. So the dates column will contain the data for 2021 and the date column will contain the data for the other two years, 2022 and 2023, and will contain null values for 2021. So that's something that you need to make sure of, which is that the spelling of all the column names is exactly the same. And not only you need to make sure that the spelling is the same, but also the casing for the letters is the same. So if you change that for 2021 to date here with a small d at the beginning, and although the spelling is the same, the casing for the letters is not the same. And because appending is case sensitive, you're also going to have two different columns. So if you go here, append queries, append queries is new, and we'll select here 2022 and 2023, click OK, and you'll have another appended query. You'll see here that you have a date column here with a small d and another date column with a capital D at the beginning. So it's very important that you make sure that the spelling for the column names is the same and also the casing for the column names is the same across all the appended queries. Otherwise, you'll have two columns containing the same data and you're going to have problems. 
All right, guys, so in this video, we managed to merge sales data from multiple worksheets to a single table, and we created a pivot table based on the consolidated sales data. And we also managed to connect our sales data to the products table via table relationships in order to dissect our sales data by product name, category, and brand. And if you'd like to learn more about creating data models in Excel using Power Pivot and take your data analysis game to the next level by using DAX formulas, you can check out my Excel Power Pivot course. I will leave you the link to the course along with a special discount code down below in the description. And if you found the video helpful, please make sure to give it a like and share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified with all future videos. And please make sure to follow us on social media. You'll find the links down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.